Um, uh, thank you for the introduction. The aim of my presentation is to introduce the brief history of Dunajváros, the first socialist model town in Hungary. Looking through the construction of the city, I display its uh, utopian urbanistic concept with the highlights of the political effects. After the Second World War, an intense competition launched for obtaining the political influence in Hungary and keeping in mind the socialist principles, the mostly communist party acquired the power and on the 15th of August in 1949, the parliament accepted the constitution constitution of the Hungarian People's Republic. The end of the Second World War is uh, uh, not quite a notable milestone uh, for the Hungarian architecture. The pre-war modern efforts continued almost invariably. Moreover, the domestic line was also alive for a while, but in a diminished form. Hungarian architects uh, intended to not only restore the damages, but rebuild the country. Uh, three um, uh, architectural periods can be distinguished from that time, although the borders aren't so sharp between them. As uh, you can see, uh, from 1955 to 45 to 51, the first period of modern style, from uh, 51 to 55, the socialist realism, and from uh, uh, C uh, 56, the second period of the um, uh, modern style. And never more articles were published or speeches were given about the architectural styles in Hungary until that time. The party was determined uh, to follow the Soviet rules and establish the socialist realism. Uh, the great debate over the post-war architecture began in uh, 1949 and lasted until uh, 51. Architects were uh, uh, in a fragile situation because during the conversions brief years, it was possible to not respond to the political criticism and use their mostly modern style. But eventually, the party enforced the architectural revolution to call the Hungarian socialist architecture into being. The modern style was banned. Uh, uh, for its formalism and expensiveness, and mostly because the modern buildings represented the decadent capitalism. The conversion wasn't smooth at the beginning. After the declaration, the buildings uh, were still more modern than uh, socialist realistic. In order to display the expected style, uh, a congress uh, was held by the Hungarian architects at the end of October in 1951. It was the highlight of the propaganda, the final debate. The architects were told to represent uh, the new style with using uh, such elements of the neoclassicism, like the horizontal and uh, symmetrical arrangement of the facade, stone or cast stone covered plinth, or columned portico crowned with uh, tympanum. For ornamental details, the ancient uh, Greek or Roman architectural morphology was uh, authoritative. Um, the planned urban development was uh, one of the greatest innovations of the Soviet architecture. The aim was uh, to unite the whole city, uh, get rid of um, uh, the quality differences and uh, expand the borders towards the countryside by erecting similar buildings as in the city center. The whole city was uh, reconned as a living uh, artistic integral in which the representative spaces are uh, as momentous as the laborers' homes. In this way, the most uh, inconsiderable building could transform to uh, some kind of uh, monument. Improving the central path was uh, uh, a path with uh, spacious representative spaces was an important aspe uh, aspect to fit for the ritual mass events and demonstra demonstrations. The high volume of the constructions required to work out type design series for certain details and the average floor space of the uh, apartment decreased under 50 square meters and the rooms were often interconnected. The Soviet society took pride in achieving 
that the art is no longer a privilege of the rich, but uh, belongs to the whole working nation. Socialist in content, national in form, uh, these were the cornerstones of the socialist realist architecture. Since uh, most of the Hungarian architects hadn't been unwilling to accept the grandiose archising uh, Soviet style, they were taken to so-called study tours to the Soviet Union, and uh, they also got Soviet advisors to correct their plans. Uh, Pursi, this new style was an important milestone for the post-war uh, Hungarian um, architecture. In this picture you can see some of um, those architects I will uh, speak next. Um, uh, it was taken in Moscow in a so-called study tour. The Hungarian Working uh, People's Party decided in January of uh, uh, 1949 to establish a new metallurgical factory and a joint residential district. Later that year, in spring, the construction had begun in Mohács. Uh, then the works got suspended all of a sudden. It's known from later uh, archival research that the decision was made uh, under the pressure of the Russian Soviet party, mostly because uh, the changes of the international relations and uh, also the unfavorable Hungarian-Yugoslavian relationship. As you can see, Mohács is only 10 kilometers away from the uh, Yugoslavian border. Uh, thus, the building uh, uh, operation began up on the left coast uh, at the Danube Bank in May of uh, 1950, next to a village called uh, Dunapentele. The chief architect was uh, uh, Tibor Weiner, who was a student of the Bauhaus in 1929, uh, then worked alongside Hans Meyer in the Soviet Union from 1931 uh, to 36. Before he left Europe for Chile in the summer of 39, he had moved to Paris, where he was working at uh, Pierre Forestier's office. In Russia, he mostly worked uh, uh, on factory buildings and uh, trade schools, while in France, he planned nursing homes and health facilities. In uh, Santiago de Chile, he became uh, a professor at the local university and uh, published a series of academic papers beside uh, his independent architectural career. He returned to Hungary after the war in January 1948 for the promising opportunities uh, uh, and control the construction of Tunoy Varos uh, until his death in 1955. The city was mentioned as the socialist town for the first time in the autumn of uh, 1950, and by the end of next spring, the village of Dunapentele officially became the first socialist town in the country and uh, took the name of Stalin. Thus, from 51 to 61, uh, it was called Stalin City, similar to uh, Stalingrad. Amongst other reasons, naming the town uh, after Stalin had at least one great benefit. Uh, the Soviet Union was uh, under the necessity to engage the ironworks in the European uh, industrial management. In his memoir, uh, Weiner mentioned the difficulties he had at the beginning of the construction, but then uh, very carefully and deliberately planned cityscape worked out, uh, which has been designed to serve every needs of the socialist man. He followed uh, uh, the main principles of the socialism. Uh, every unit of the town must be on the same level of quality. The town and the industrial plane are must be in a direct context with each other. And the representative wide main road and the main square with the public institutions must serve events like uh, demonstrations or marches. Every services uh, the citizens needed were available uh, close to their homes. Every well-defined uh, so-called neighborhood units had their own play school, kindergarten, elementary school, food store, and grocery. So uh, everything what they needed uh, for the everyday life. One of the most important parts of the urban planning was uh, the afforestation in the streets and uh, between the town and the factory. You will see uh, later on the pictures how it looks like today. Um, the city had the privilege to own uh, a, a polyclinic with excellent equipment, a few years later also a hospital with similar conditions. The country's 
very first uh, deck level swimming pool. It was a pioneer uh, of its kind. Moreover, a picture theater and a city library as well. The cultural life was uh, uh, very vivid. Lots of clubs and uh, study groups had been formed and their members achieved uh, great places even in national competitions. Dunajváros was a role model for sure. Uh, a city where the socialism's three basic rules, working, learning and living in the best socialist way could materialize very well. The evolution of the Hungarian post war architecture, those uh, three, three, three periods I mentioned, is uh, clearly visible both on the designs and the actual buildings in Dunajváros. In May of 1950, the construction had begun with some difficulties, but it later uh, got going really fast by the summer, so much that the operations went almost faster than the designing itself. Permanent and temporary houses were built uh, in the same time. The cityscape was really colorful. By September, uh, the first residential uh, district uh, or blocks uh, were finished, then the construction uh, of the ironworks could begin a month later. Meantime, the rapidly changing political demands required a lot of redesigning. The plans were changing almost uh, constantly. The Office of the National Architectural Board, uh, responsible for the urban design, expressed the very sharp critics based on the already constructed and yet planned buildings. They acknowledged that uh, the existence of the standard socialist realist style could not be expected due to the continuous uh, building operations. However, they found uh, the first unit featureless. Uh, this uh, unit belongs to the first period of the post-war modern style. The type designs were made by Josef Scholl. Um, these are the so-called uh, cube buildings. And actually, this uh, um, bar or uh, this uh, local was also called cube. <laughs> it's not existing anymore, unfortunately. The later built, uh, oh, this is another picture. Um, the later built units along the main road got much better judgment because of the major and more uh, classical features. Uh, these buildings are uh, these buildings are uh, great examples for the Hungarian socialist realist uh, style. Uh, they have held most of those architectural elements which were, which were required uh, for the socialist realist style. Uh, the long wide main road connects the industrial district with the city center with large socialist realist uh, row houses on both sides. Just before the main square, uh, this row uh, breaks uh, and uh, there stands two buildings on each side, which differ from the usually five or uh, six story houses. One is the cinema, uh, the other is the polyclinic, both, both built in 51-52 uh, uh, in uh, transitional style. This is the cinema, and this is the polyclinic. The architect, the, the Doja Picture Theater, is one of the very first representative uh, buildings of the town. According to the Leninist uh, propaganda, cinematics is the most important tool for re-educating the working people. Uh, thus, a newly developed uh, socialist city couldn't live without a cinema. The architect, George Srog, uh, who was the one who made the culture house uh, uh, in Shagotarian, and I showed the pictures before the lunch break. So uh, 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 this architect, George Strog, worked at uh, several state institution, institutes from uh, 1947, and he was uh, a teacher at the Department of Residential Building Design from uh, 51 to 55. In his memoir, he opens about the political influences of the socialist era. At that time, he was employed uh, by the National Public Design Company. He had tried to master his plans by the rules of the office and 
also maintain his uh, professional, uh, professional integrity. He hadn't uh, been able to avoid using some socialist realist elements, but never so much that uh, he should have been ashamed of later. He said that um, no one knows what are the exact markings of the socialist realism. Everybody has made theories. The theorists are referring to Andrzej Danov, who died in the meanwhile, and uh, he took the secret with him to the grave. <laughs> yeah. Um, the tr this uh, transitional period lasted about three years, and the cinema is a great example for that method, because at first sight, uh, it's hard to say uh, it was a building, uh, it was built uh, during the socialist times, rather come near, as Srog wrote himself, to the northern Scandinavian style. Uh, uh, the picture theater had opened temporarily in December of uh, 1951, just one day before the great Stalin statue was inaugurated in Budapest. Uh, Srok had to redesign the plans, so the building got its final form a year later, in November of uh, 1952. Uh, the building stands between two L-shaped, uh, clearly socialist realist buildings, a bit farther from the main street. The square bakes the long row of the houses, and the cinema freshens up the cityscape. Um, this is a, a cuboid building, a quite large, uh, uh, 1,600 square meter, made mostly from reinforced concrete, and the plinth is covered uh, uh, with undecorated limestones. On either side of the entrance, the facade uh, steel structure is covered with glass plates in full height, as you can see. Uh, the windows are uh, separated by stone frames, which uh, come out of the walls plane. The vertical elements are emphasized. Although the building is rather modern than uh, socialist realist, there are some elements which uh, mark this uh, transitional aspect. Um, for example, above the main entrance, over the cornice, there is a thin meander line. It's barely visible uh, for, to the naked eyes, probably on purpose. So here is the close. <laughs> uh, another example, uh, the side walls are uh, light. Uh, light rose colored and uh, above the uh, limestone plinth and uh, yeah uh, sorry so the walls are uh, rose uh, light rose colored above the limestone plinth and uh, five decorated undecorated panel ornate the sideward cornice on each axis um, the interior um, has more socialist aspects. Uh, there is a meander line above the entrance in the inside as well, which is also oh, not so visible. <laughs> and uh, uh, um, the floor and the ceiling both have ornaments decoration. There are keystones on the ceilings uh, with the floral decoration. The staircase, staircases on both sides are going up uh, to the upper story loft, which used to give a place to uh, socialist exhibitions, but now, nowadays it's closed uh, by a wall for a bar. Um, the large windows on the street front uh, highlight the transitional aspect by uh, mirroring the back of the uh, cornering houses. Thus, viewed from uh, the front, it seems uh, the cinema has more socialist realist elements than it actually does. Uh, unfortunately, neither the original nor the redesigned plans are available, so it's unknown what ornaments had been put on the buildings originally and uh, what got on later. Just across the road, uh, stands uh, the polyclinic, also a great example for this uh, transitional method. Only the additional socialist realist ornaments are more visible. The plans were made by uh, Andras Ivanka, who redesigned them several times, but after all the efforts, the polyclinic is still the most outlander building uh, of the city center, set by the critics. 
Um, the building consists uh, of two geom geometrical elements, a cuboid and an attached cylinder. Duri during the development, uh, it got rotated uh, perpendicularly towards the main road and uh, such ornaments got uh, put on like uh, uh, the hexagonal windows, the uh, Egyptian style ornaments above the entrance uh, and the cornix and uh, plinth like uh, this. The original plan lacked all of uh, these elements. Uh, these are the very clear signs of the political influence. Uh, the polyclinic was built in the same year than the cinema. More changes were needed perhaps because uh, it is not cornered so closely by uh, great socialist realist buildings and uh, it's too close to the planned main square. This is the, the building of the cinema. These are the really great uh, socialist realist buildings cornering it, and this is the polyclinic, but it, this side is, uh, it, it isn't, uh, didn't get constructed. Uh, and this part of the plan uh, is non-existence. Uh, Weiner planned the main square. This is supposed to be the main square. Uh, with the town hall and uh, other public institutions. And this is the end, end uh, of the main road, which uh, uh, connects the main square to the entrance of the ironworks. Uh, for this plan, the, for the uh, main square, only the uh, town hall uh, got constructed, but eventually, uh, uh, a great modern building was built to hide it because um, um, in spite of uh, it was a really, it is a really great socialist realist building, it was not monumentous enough uh, for the party to move in. So uh, this building, uh, uh, this really great modern building was uh, built to hide it by Ferenc Baranyi and actually Weiner also encouraged to hide it because uh, he, he later he thought that it was it's uh, not uh, a very good building. But this this building is an excellent example to the second period of modern uh, style. Uh, I have mentioned these uh, per periods uh, earlier. This is another picture of it and. Uh, in uh, 1961, both the town and the ironworks uh, have got new names. From uh, Stalin City, it got Dunaujváros, which means uh, new city on the Danube, and the Stalin uh, ironworks uh, got the same name, uh, the Danube, and Danube ironworks uh, Dunaujvásmű. And um, uh, the construction of the town continued after the death, uh, Weiner's death in 1955. The party spent a great amount of money to develop the city, which uh, some was partially but not completely exploited by the ironworks. Hence, other regions of the country were cut from uh, development and sponsorship. At the beginning, uh, it was regulated very strictly who could move in and settle down in Dunajváros. Later, this uh, practice got a um, bit lighter until the end of the 70s. Keep bigger. Until the end of the 70s, uh, life was cheaper and more uh, comfortable in Dunajváros compared to the other Hungarian cities. And at last, uh, let me show a few photos of the town, town's life from the beginning until now. This is the first neighborhood unit. Uh, I show uh, already this picture. Uh, this is the back of the theater here and the first elementary school here and the uh, playground for the children. And this is a small uh, swimming pool. It was really cool. Uh, this, uh, this is the entrance uh, of the ironworks with a really great uh, fresco by uh, uh, Andrei Domanovsky. And this uh, fresco is uh, 
one of the greatest uh, real socialist realist works. Um, it's a very famous Hungarian pig slaughter at the main street. <laughs> uh, another picture from the swimming pool. Um, it's the theater. The party moved here uh, eventually because they uh, didn't like the town hall, but Weiner planned for them. And uh, this is uh, the shopping center. It looks like this now. And uh, some other socialist buildings from the city center. And uh, this is a really great one. It's a, it's a harbor building. Actually, it's, uh, it's, it's huge, really, really huge. Uh, it's at the other side of the, um, an artificial bay, but it was never used as the headquarter of the uh, harbor. Uh, it, it's, most, uh, it's empty now. It was uh, used uh, for a clothing factory for a while, but, uh, but now it's uh, completely empty. And this is a little graffiti at the side of the uh, cinema. And that's all. Thank you for the attention. Thank you very much, Anna. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. It was not because I don't like this topic. Actually, I'm a big fan of Duno Rivaros. Uh, six years ago, we visited with uh, students, and uh, I was amazed uh, by uh, the high quality of, uh, of this uh, uh, building you showed us. Um, I asked the audience that if there is any question. Thank you very much. Uh, my question is, do you consider social realism as social modernist style? Because uh, as far as I know, there is a huge uh, separation between the two. But uh, I liked your uh, presentation because you showed us uh, some struggling architects who were who tried to uh, come back to the modernist roots, but they were cut down at some point. Uh, yeah. So, do you consider it uh, as social modernism, or yeah? Uh, well, it's uh, uh, no, I don't. But I think there is a very thin line, and there are uh, uh, some buildings uh, which is uh, uh, just uh, transitional between these uh, styles. I, I can't uh, use a very sharp line uh, between these styles. Uh, they say that the, the line is uh, the Brussels Expo in 57 or 58, where it was more or less decided. And before that, the modernist examples uh, were, like, were more like a, a continuous... Uh, uh, it was a... Con um, it was uh, what was continued after. Uh, so the uh, post-war modernism uh, before the Brussels Expo is supposed to be uh, the constitution of uh, the pre-war modernism. Um, if you know what I mean. I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, and before, because of that, it's not really the subject of uh, social modernism. Yeah. I because it had, it had different principles. Yes, yes, it's true. It's, uh, it's this, I think this is why it's uh, important to um, say that there is two periods of the modern architecture after the Second World War. But what I, I'm saying is that uh, social realism is not really modern. Yes. So, okay. We are on the same page. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much for this interesting talk. Um, my question is about uh, identity. We spoke about before um, in, in the morning about the identity of uh, Shagotari, another the people of the Verdier. 
some Dunoy Varos identity, Dunoy Varos pride, because I know the people were uh, put together from several regions of, 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 of Hungary. So I, I'm, and I know in the beginning they were struggle about how they people feel it, is, is the video community or not. So what happened with this? You show us a uh, lot of propaganda pictures, but what was the reality behind that? Uh, well, uh, as I know from uh, mostly from my uh, um, the memoirs of my family, family, uh, both of my parents' uh, families were uh, forced to move to the town to uh, to build this the great socialism. Uh, so at the beginning, of course, it uh, wasn't uh, a great community, but uh, uh, later on, uh, from the 60s, 70s. It is actually. Uh, it, it was a, a really great place to live. With uh, it was a very friendly town, and uh, people were uh, uh, really proud of uh, that. Uh, uh, they uh, built it with often with their bare hands, and uh, and I think yes, yes. As as they uh, they were speaking about uh, the life uh, during the 60s and the 70s, I. I assume that it was a very strong community. Unfortunately, it's uh, it somehow disappeared now because uh, just it's similar. The case is similar uh, as uh, in uh, the case of Shagotarian. It's uh, very high, very hard to find a job for uh, the young people, so they are constantly moving out of the town. And uh, by now, uh, Dunajváros is one of the oldest town in Hungary. Uh, in the case of the average. Uh, uh, years of the inhabitants. You mentioned the, the journey of the architects to the Soviet Union in the early 50s. Uh, could you say which year it was? I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know exactly when because, it was. Because uh, every socialist country has such journeys. And in the German history, the German uh, journey to Moscow is a central event uh, from which launched, for instance, the six principles and so on. And I can think, uh, for, uh, my question is, is, is in other countries have the same, the same uh, importance to the following uh, urban and architectural uh, developments? In Hungary, for instance? Yes, yes. Anyhow, there were, the, uh, there were a lot of architects learning in Moscow, and they came back. So that was another kind of education of Hungarian architects for the Stalinist uh, ideas. Yes, th these were journeys, but there were, uh, as well, uh, teaching, and we call them the Moscovites. They were uh, arriving, they have got important positions. But uh, just, just to, to continue your question, that. There, there was not so clear borders between the styles and between the, between the, the epochs because even architects were uh, uh, continuously working. They were working before the war as modernist architects, they were working after the war as modernist architects, and in the so-called socialist uh, uh, so, so socialist realist uh, period, they were working with their ho whole talent. And, and, and uh, even the styles were, were uh, changing a little bit, but, but, uh, but continuously. And the Moscovites uh, brought back quite a different uh, approach, and, and, and so that was not a continuous one. Yes, that's an important thing, and uh, if you don't mind, I just want to comment the first question that socialist modernism in Hungary is uh, modern or not. I'm uh, pretty sure that it is, because uh, these architects were modernist architects, and also if you see uh, these buildings uh, are uh, more influenced by um, the Italian modernism uh, as, as, as the, uh, the, the Bauhaus, so you, you can see the, the traces of, of the modernism in this socialist modernist uh, architecture. That, that was just my small comment. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, 
uh, if I compare it with, uh, for instance, East Germany, Eisenhüttenstadt, which, which was also called uh, Stalinstadt for uh, for a number of years, it looks more. I was impressed by the more um, individual um, statements in Dunar Varosh, and um, yes, and how do you explain, for instance, these e Egypt, the, the, the Egyptian details in, in the buildings? It was. Uh, what is the the, the sense of it <laughs> this time? Stand because uh, of the it's a uh, visangzik, no matter. Yes, I, I I mean it's it's not loud enough. Oh, actually, that building was uh, uh, re redesigned several times, and uh, each of uh, each of the cases, the uh, architect was told to put on uh, some ornaments and. Uh, uh, I think it was, uh, 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 they were told what kind of uh, ornaments uh, they could use from which, uh, um, which, which styles and uh, I think it was, uh, it was his way to make uh, that building more socialist, realist, because it, it wasn't uh, um, um, originally on the plans, so uh, I'm not sure, maybe he just uh, decided to choose this because uh, it seemed uh, to fit to the um, um, expectations. Because it, it could be in a kind of oppositional statement of, of making something uh, uh, of, 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 of um, a kind of satirical statement to this, these uh, 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 ideas which came from Moscow, and, and, and so we we, we uh, um, yes we we first we make a, we build we. Uh, uh, construct some modern. We we bring some modern ideas in it, and, and second thing, we uh, we take some ideas from from Egypt. We we compare this uh, Stalinistic uh, Stalin uh, classicism and with with Egyptian uh, uh, um, a kind of monarch monarchy or something. Yeah, maybe this could be an idea. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, lecture. I think my question is connected to all of the previous question that uh, I also heard that ironic tone in your comments in connection with uh, your lecture and the study trips, what was not really a study trip, just a pretended trip uh, to Moscow. And I think these, is that possible? It seems to me that this ironic uh, tone is refers that, uh, that uh, the social realism is not a style at all. We can't say that it's a style or it's just kind of answers from modernist architectures to, I don't know, to interpret the political idea behind uh, yeah, the communist space or a socialist space idea. Yeah, I agree with you. It's just easier to call it a style, I think. Yeah, but, but I agree with you.